Market share is cool. It's a really cool concept because it has so many different facets to it. Um, it's one of those ideas that like on a surface level, you can look at it and say, well, it's a pretty simplistic equation. But then when you kind of start to unpack it, you realize there are a variety of different ways that you can actually grow your market share. Um, in the simplest terms, it is just a health indicator for your business, right? Are we growing our presence in a given market over a given period of time? Uh, which is to say, are we installing more equipment than our competitors? So uh, with that being said, Ben, if you'd go forward, please. Uh, it's, 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 as I said, at a surface level, it's a very, very simple equation. And if you were a business owner, if you're listening and you're an owner right now, um, you can do a few things to start to chip away at it. Number one, uh, market share is typically determined over a very specific period of time. So you could, for example, look at first quarter of this year, and that's followed by a specific location. Uh, now, you know, obviously companies like uh, Goodman Amana play at a national level, uh, regionally, state, town. But, you know, for, for a lot of people listening, just your service zip codes would probably be the most appropriate, um, narrowest way to get some credible information about your share. And then, you know, at that point, you have two different options. Uh, classically, market share can be considered as sales over a period of time divided by total sales in the industry. For the sake of this discussion, I think it makes a lot of sense to look at the motor bearing units that a manufacturer or a contractor is putting into his or her service area divided by the total motor bearing units that are going into that area. And that gives you your share number. So, you know, I got a little bit of data from the Goodman team, and uh, the example here indicates that over a specific period of time, which was the month of March in a major metropolitan area, Goodman put in 6,611 units that were shipped into this area. And um, while not all of those, of course, are going to be sold, uh, if you were to divide that by the total industry units that were shipped in to the same area, that gives you your market share. If your market share is growing, yeah, arguably that's a good sign. If your market share is shrinking, it's the opportunity to begin to ask yourself, you know, why is this contraction occurring? And that's where so many of the nuances regarding market shares start to kind of come together here. Most importantly, I think for us, it is an opportunity to consider some of the controllables that a small business can both evaluate and in some cases retool to get the market share heading in the uh, positive direction again. So, you know, once you kind of know what your number is, if it's growing, can, you know, fantastic, let's understand why. And if it's contracting, then let's look at some, you know, corrective measures. Right on. So, you know, in addition to this, and I think this is why market share tends to be, you know, again, it's, it, it, as I said, it's very multifaceted. You know, as your, as, as your share increases, as your share you know, really kind of starts to create its own bandwagon effect, one of the implications or one of the potential implications is that companies with larger market shares don't necessarily have to spend as much on their marketing and advertising costs. Uh, one could make the case, for example, that a company like Nike, uh, who has just such an absolutely dominant top of mind presence and loyal fan bases and sneaker heads and online subcultures doing all this sort of stuff, you know, they already have that kind of like actual critical mass that they need to continue to grow. And so even though, they, even though they're one of the world's largest marketing and advertising companies, and I'm by no means suggesting that you pull your money for marketing and advertising off the table in that regard. You don't necessarily have to you know, invest quite so much as your share grows because you start to gain that top of mind awareness with customers. Uh, again, as you continue to grow, there is a bandwagon effect, right? There, uh, there, something happens to your brand where the status sort of propels it forward. Uniquely though, and I think this is an important piece about market share, as you grow into a leadership position, as you gain that top of mind awareness, that, that, that first page presence that Jennifer uh, talks about as being so critical, you know, one of the distinctions that you notice is that these companies 
as they grow, are also developing really specific brand messages. And as Tom mentioned, they're developing really acute and refined selling strategies that allow them both to grow while supporting higher top and bottom line results. By contrast, if you're a smaller company with, with shrinking or, or very little market share, um, you're gonna suffer downward price pressure uh, against this type of competition, uh, perhaps because your message is being commoditized, which is very likely, or it could be a sheer survival strategy. And time and again in classes, everybody here has heard people say, how does company X command dollar Y? It's impossible, they must be ripping off the customer. It's not that they're ripping off the customer. It is actually probably that they have developed these two fixtures in their selling model. They A, have a really clear perspective and brand point of view, and they have attended enough training and embedded it into their culture where their sales team is more than competent in resolving price and style objections while protecting uh, top and bottom line results. So if you're listening to this and think, okay, that's kind of a cool idea, how do I start? Well, there, 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 there's some very, very easy ways you can get started without having to add a lot of people. In order to grow share, you have to have the labor, you have to have the revenue producers to put more equipment into your marketplace. And so one very common sense place to start is taking a look at revenue production and operational roadblocks. For example, if you were to create a callback report or determine a callback ratio for your installations, or if you were to identify installations that typically run long, uh, labor overruns, things like that, you have to be able to put equipment into the marketplace by having freed up revenue producers to do that. So one place to start, one KPI would be operational roadblocks. Yeah, you know, second, another way to grow share is to control costs. And Clearly, you know, the, the, the correlation between controlling costs and your street price go hand in hand. But again, I would look at cost overruns. I would look at controlling equipment and material parts and pieces costs. Control your costs, visible and hidden, that might be preventing revenue production. And then finally, of course, look at your service area. Market share is certainly determined by the expanse of the service area that you're trying to get a share number in. So for example, you may say, my market is all of Houston. I've been to Houston, it's like a planet unto itself. But if you shrink your share down to a really concentrated area and say, we just wanna be the absolute best and we want to be the most exceptionally branded company in the 77871 area code, which is a very affluent part of that city. Well, suddenly, of course, what you're doing is concentrating your ability to put more equipment into a smaller area than having to serve a city with 10 million people in it. And that absolutely impacts the concentration of your share numbers. So I would say, you know, as I kind of put the, put, put, put the end of this presentation, a great place to start in terms of determining share and controlling it and growing it would be manage your labor very conservatively. Manage your labor, prevent overruns, prevent callbacks, prevent those pesky trips to the parts houses that keep your revenue producers from putting in the system. When you look at your marketing, of course, that plays a big role in this, and we're so lucky to have the CI Web Group team here kind of shepherding us through this very confusing process. But of course, look at the return on your investment. Are the marketing dollars that you're spending giving you sufficient leads, but also are, those, are, are, are the leads themselves uh, lined up and satisfying your revenue needs per lead? And then while we're here talking, I would use this time to step back and say, really, what is my brand? How do I defend a higher price position? What is my lane? Why am I worth more? And if someone were to ask me, what's your onlyness? What's unique about your company? Could I succinctly define that? Because clearly that's going to have an impact on whether or not the true end user decides to work with you or not. So market share is, is a, it, it, I, at the surface, it's a very basic equation. But when you begin to unpack it, when you begin to take a look at all of the facets of it, it, it really does kind of ripple through nearly every aspect of your company, from labor to operations, to sales, to branding, to marketing, to advertising. Um, and there are some very basic ways you can start moving in the right direction.